The racing post slips up yesterday and I'm going to expose it because it shows exactly what's going on with price-wise tips and how racing fans trust is being exploited for a profit. It gets pretty twisted in just a minute but to set the scene for everyone, yesterday the Racing Post YouTube account uploaded this video in a new series called Maddie Meets, where they've hired a young girl to interview key horse racing figures. There were some shocking admissions within it. If you want to see yourself, head over to the Racing Post channel, watch the video. Um, I'm not going to play it within this video for legal and copyright reasons. I know that these media agencies get very sensitive when you start talking about the things that they are doing online, especially when it uh, involves customers. However, here's the deal. Racing Post, you get to put the adverts out, you get massive revenue off the bookmakers, you get to send people down the garden path and profit for that. I get to talk about it and people that follow this channel get to make their own opinion and talk about it elsewhere. So she starts off by introducing Tom Segal, the Racing Post price-wise tipster with the best reputation in the game, as she says herself. They talk about his background briefly, and he mentions that he studied economics at university. A little fact that you may not have known and may want to remember for later on in the video before moving on to become a Racing Post tipster. Now, to be completely fair here, look, this is nothing personal, nothing against Tom. I've said the same thing to other people in other areas. It's a video about showing people how the whole process is exploitive, and Tom is actually part of that. Um, but I'm sure he's a great guy. And he did say some sensible things which we'll talk about later too. But followers of this channel have pushed me towards this interview and said that I need to take a look at this and that says to me that they're drawing their own conclusions very similar to mine. Now the first of several shocking revelations is that Tom says uh, around about 250 into the video that I don't get to choose the bookmakers will send me the list and I will just prioritize the race. I think I've got a best chance in. So the bookmakers get to choose the marketplaces in which he provides tips in the price wise column for the racing post. Stay with me here because in order to have price wise tips and have access to them, you need to be part of members club. For around about 35 pound a month, you can get racing replays, a couple of news articles early, a few things like that and the tips within it. Obviously, we all know the tips are what people subscribe for. So you get to buy selections from Tom from a list of pre-approved races that the bookmakers have chosen, probably where they've put massive overround margins on those markets, meaning that you can't win and it's really poor value. The whole video, by the way, is used to promote Members Club and there's actually links about it in the description. Now, anyone with half a brain cell knows that this presents a massive problem because the situation has been set up and rigged and people are paying for these tips that are then sending them to poor value with the bookmakers, even if they'll accept their bets, which makes you wonder, what else do the bookmakers get to choose? Do they choose the news? You guessed it. If you've seen the Racing Post for a long time, you'll see that they're very supportive of the FOBT campaigns. You'll notice that they maybe don't talk about failings from the Gambling Commission and various other topics. Racing Post, in my opinion, have just become a PR company for multiple bookmakers. They are a super affiliate. They're not providing news, they're not providing journalism, and they're certainly not being um, particularly honest with their paying loyal members, and particularly the Members Club. Now, to kick back on that and be fair to Tom, at 4.55 within the video, he admits he was never really a huge punter, and he does acknowledge that people can't get a bet on. So he knows about these problems, um, although he continues um, to be part of the process. And at 5.44, he says affordability is a big threat to the industry, but he neglects to say that bookmakers are part of that problem, they've created that problem, and they thrust that problem on everybody else. Um, with their exploitive tactics and grooming behavior. Now, before I lay out how the swindle actually works, there's a couple more key points that you should probably remember in advance, sort of setting the scene for this. And the first one can be found at just after 10 minutes into the video, where he says, half the reason I'm not on social media is it would hurt me, I'm quite sensitive. The second one being at 11.30 or thereabouts in the video, where he says about the chap who emailed him because he had won 60,000 um, pounds using his tips something that is highlighted later on in the Racing Post article on their website. In fact, they use it in the headline um, to hook people in. And then the third point being around about 12 minutes 35 into the video, where he says that people take it too seriously and you know gambling should be fun 
um, and it's not about making money despite selling tips and you know pushing those lines like the guy who's won sixty thousand pounds now i'm sure some people are going to say oh but the racing post do talk about restrictions and there was an article earlier in the week because i've seen it myself from lee marchhead but this is all part of it and this is what happens the article gets published about restrictions behind the paywall on members club and not promoted as much as the other article so later on they or people or maybe people like tom can turn around and pay lip service to it by saying hey we did talk about it once you know um, i had the same similar on twitter with Richard Hoyles where he said to me he had wrote in his column some years ago about restrictions so that must make him exempt from all the issues that are happening right now. Now look this channel is not sponsored by bookmakers and I don't have a uh, vested interest in leading you down the garden path. I'm sponsored by The Truth so please tap the like button down below. Now on to the stitch up that is The Swindle. So it's not just the racing post that I feel this applies to. It can be the broader media within the industry. Again, I don't like to single people out in particular. Company, companies and their behavior is slightly different, um, and I don't want to target Tom in particular because I'm sure he's a lovely chap, but it's an open loop uh, swindle. So there's basically three points within this. First of all, the media, like the Racing Post, price-wise, uh, they hire like the young girl to get people's attention, particularly middle-aged men who like to have a bet. Um, they then use that attention to send you to a place like their, their tipping site, the Racing Post, charge you for money for it on the way in with the uh, membership club, say that there's plenty of experts, uh, inside knowledge, um, getting the, what was it, stay ahead or something like that, that's what it was called, um, and advertise the chance to win money, much like that headline, £60,000 winner in the past. You sign up to Members Club, part with your money. Um, they, in the background, have done a corporate deal with a bookmaker whereby they say, you know, you give us a pre-approved list of markets you're quite happy to lay some bets on because it's at a high margin, um, and then we will send all these people that have paid us to the tips in that race, and you can also make money, and again, give us kickback via affiliate rev share deals, uh, depending on how many people that they actually have. Now, obviously, the customers, you guys, bet on the tips, lose your money over the longer term because it's bad value, you can't win. Um, the bookies get paid, the racing post gets paid, Tom gets paid, you get left out of pocket. Then you maybe get a little bit upset, share something on social media, like that was highlighted in the previous video upload, and they turn around and say, oh, but we did publish an article once behind the paywall about uh, restrictions and it does happen and it should all be fun. Amongst all of this, Tom is not on Twitter himself or social media because he's quite sensitive. He doesn't want to hear about the downside and the massive amounts of money that have been lost, the exploitive tactics that are employed by his uh, paymasters. Although he's quite happy to accept an email about a guy who, accept, who uh, won £60,000. Tom clearly understands all of this himself. He studied economics at university. He knows how the system works, how the game works, and he's been doing it for a very large number of years now. Meanwhile, the Gambling Commission looks on, nothing gets done about this. People turn around and say, hey, can't you're being really horrible here and you're targeting one person. You can't blame a person, but you know we can't blame the company either because they're not being responsible. The racing posts are not really being responsible. The Gambling Commission is doing nothing about it, and so the open loop is left, and it just continues going round and round. They make lots of money, and you guys are left out on the hook. Now, now the solution to this is a single customer wallet. I mentioned it in a previous video. To keep it brief, it solves all problems. One-off, independent platform where punters deposit their money, traders, whoever, whatever you're doing, into this independent verified wallet. Affordability checks, AML checks are done once instead of with multiple different providers. It solves the problem of disordered gambling. It solves the problem of submitting multiple documents to multiple providers many different times. It solves the problem of bookies admin problem dealing with all this process. And it solves the problem of bookies exploiting it too. So I'd urge everyone watching this video to get behind it and also forward that onto their MP. There was an article on Conservative Home from Andrew, Andrew Bridgen about it. Bookies just can't be trusted to hold the reins on these important issues, especially when there's a monstrous financial interest in the game, which is highlighted perfectly in in this shocking sequence of events from Coral earlier in the week. Check it out, everybody needs to see this and see what's been going on here as there was some shocking admissions within it. Thanks for watching, don't forget to like and subscribe.